Hello, in this video, we will learn how to use clones and maintain score in a game. Here we will create a game where there are multiple balls or any sprite moving randomly on the screen and if you manage to click on the ball, your score increments by 1. Now we know how to add a sprite and make it move randomly on the screen. We will put glide randomly in forever loop and we are set. In games where there are multiple similar sprites, one way is to add them again and again to the sprite list and copy the code for all of them. Now this is not just tedious but it is difficult to maintain too. Think of games which have hundreds or thousands of spaceships to shoot or aliens to catch or precious stones to collect. That's where we have clones to help us. A clone is basically a mirror image of sprite, all of which behave the same way means they have the same script and you do not have to write the script to again and again. To do this, we will go to the control block and pick the command create clone. Here you see we can create clone of yourself or any other sprite too which is in the sprite list. Now if I just put it in a forever loop, it will start creating clones. But the clones don't seem to be doing anything, they just feel like stamps. That's because we have not told the clones what to do or we have not yet written their script. Now in the control block, you will find only one hat block which is when I start as clone. We will use that and then we want that it should also move randomly like the parent ball. So we will first replicate the glide code here. Now when you press the green button, you will see the clones are getting created as well as moving randomly. If you feel clones are getting created too fast, you can slow it down by adding weight and you can also adjust the speed of glide of the clones. Ok so now how do I catch a ball and increment my score? In the last video, we had used sensing condition to send a message. We will now add a similar sensing condition. We will add a if from the control block and use touching mouse pointer from sensing commands. Now my condition is ready and we have to add the score. If you go to variables, we will see make a variable button. We will click on it and type score. It has two options. If you want the score to be available to all sprites to change or only this sprite. The second is useful when you write multiplayer games. For the moment, we will select for all sprites and press OK. You will see score now available on top of the stage and in variable list as well. You can hide the score by clicking on the checkbox too. Now we will just add change my variable by 1 inside the if block. From the drop down box you have to pick score as my variable is the default variable provided by scratch. Now when you run your script you will see that it increments the score every time you click on the sprite. You will however see your score not resetting to 0 when the game is started. To fix this, we will have set score to 0 command added as first initialization command when flag is clicked. How about making the ball disappear when you click it? You will see delete this clone command in control block. Once you have incremented the score, we will delete the clone and this will remove it from the stage like an actual game. You can now use change costumes, add sound to make this game more interactive.